So let's move on to the first problem here, which is one of the scenarios. So what you want to do is you want to go through this workbook step by step and follow along with me while I go through each scenario. And what I'm going to do here is show you the answers to all the problems that we're going to go through. What you can do as you're working through these problems is start off the problem, work with me while I'm describing it in the video, and fill out your sheet, and then pause the video as you need to and rewind it if you need to in order to help understand better. And this is going to be really important because subnetting requires one thing to learn it, and that's practice, 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 practice. The way we set subnetting up is so that it's not math heavy. I want you to look at patterns and see the patterns in the binary instead of doing a lot of the heavy duty math. If you think about it, the heaviest dutiest math that we're doing in here is binary to decimal conversion and decimal to binary conversion. Outside of that, the mathematics is actually quite simple. So let's take a dive into this. All right, so here's our problem. Our ISP provided us the address 10.0.50.0 slash 24. We need 11 networks. So let's subnet 10.0.50.0 slash 24 into at least 11 networks. To do that, we're going to convert our addresses to binary and find out what the range of addresses we have to work with here. So 10.0.50.0 slash 24 can also be written as 10.0.50.0 through 10.0.50.255. And if we look at our binary representation of that, we see that our subnet mask has 24 bits in it. So we put the first 24 bits in the network portion, 8 bits in the host portion. To get my network address, I put all zeros in the host portion. To get my broadcast address, which is the very last address in the network, I put all ones in the host portion. All right, so I have eight bits available to modify. So let's find out how many bits we need in order to accomplish this. So if we look at my chart, if we look at our calculator, we are going to need at least 16 networks. So eight is too few right, because we need 11, and 8 is smaller than 11. 16 is too many, but it's our only option, because we can either borrow 3 bits or 4 bits. We can't borrow 3 and a half bits. So, we need 4 additional bits in order to accomplish 11 networks. So, we'll go set up the problem. We're going to put our given address in binary at the top of our workbook page on the graph paper. We're going to put our given subnet mask right below it, and then draw a line between the network and the host portion. Next, we're going to calculate our new subnet mask, which is going to be our given mask plus our borrowed bits. And we needed to borrow four bits in order to get 11 networks. So I borrow four bits, move those into network portion that used to be host portion up here. And now I have four bits left in my host portion. Now I can calculate network number zero. To calculate network zero, I convert zero to binary, and I put it in my four borrowed bits. So zero, 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 zero is equal to zero. Remember, I am yanking those four bits out of my borrowed bit section and using that to convert the network number that I'm calculating to stick it into those borrowed bits. So I want network 0, so I write 0 in 4 bits, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Put all zeros in my host portion to get my network address. I add 1 to the host portion to get my first host. Notice that my network portion of my first host address is exactly the same as my network address. My last host address, I can calculate by finding out what my broadcast address is here, which is all ones in the host portion. I subtract one, that gives me my last host address. I can convert this to decimal then. My network address is 10.0.50.0 slash 28 this time. My first host address, 10.0.50.1. Last host, 10.0.50.14. And my broadcast address, 10.0.50.15 slash 28. I can then calculate additional networks. Right, so here I'm going to calculate network 1. 
So now I have four bits in my borrowed section here. So I yank those four bits out. I convert one to binary. I put it in those four bits, and then I stick those back in the address. So 0, 0, 0, 1, those four bits are equivalent to one in decimal. To calculate the network address, I put all zeros in the host portion. Network number two. So for network number two, once again, we convert two to binary, put it in our borrowed bit section. So here, two in binary is zero, zero, one, zero. Remember, we're pulling those four bits out and making the number two just with those four bits. And then we're taking those four bits and we're putting them back into the address and putting all zeros in the host portion if we want the network address. If we want the first host, we would put zero, 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 one in our host portion. If we want our broadcast address, we would put one, 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 one in our host portion. And if we wanted the last host, we would put one, 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 zero. But the network portion is always going to remain the same for each of those. Calculate network number three. Now we're going to take three, convert it to binary, put it in our borrowed bit section, put all zeros in our host portion. That gives us network number three. Keep going with this, network number four, convert four to binary, move it into our borrowed bit section, put all zeros in the host portion to get our network address. Network number five, count one higher in our borrowed bit section to five with those four bits, still all zeros in the host portion to get our network address. Calculate network number six, zero one one zero is six in binary. So we're taking those four bits out of the address, converting it to six, putting them back into the address, putting all zeros in the host portion to get our network address. Last one here that we'll do on this slide is network number seven. Convert seven to binary. We get zero, one, one, one. Put that in the four bits, put it back into the IP address, put all zeros in our host portion. We get network number seven. Notice in these four borrowed bits, if we ignore the rest of this, if we ignore the portion of the address to the left of this main line, and we ignore the address to the right of our calculated line, if we look at just those four bits, we're counting in binary just as we would count in binary normally. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. We're just counting in just that four bit field in order to calculate each one of these network numbers. So let's go convert these binary addresses to decimal. And we're going to do that by taking eight bits at a time and converting it back into decimal. So here we have network 0 through 7, 10.0.50.0 slash 28, 10.0.50.16 slash 28. Then we have dot 32, dot 48. Dot 64, dot 80, dot 96, and dot 112. Let's do networks 8 through 15. So, network number 8, we're going to convert 8 to binary, put it into our borrowed bits, put all zeros in our host portion to get our network address. Same thing with network 9. So, convert 9 to binary, 1001 is 9 in binary. All zeros in the host portion is a network address. Remember, we may not assign network addresses to real devices. We use the network addresses to build routes to get to networks. We use the individual host address to assign to a specific device on an IP network. What I'm saying there is we cannot assign an IP address to a device that has all zeros in the network portion. So here we have network 10, we convert 10 to binary, 10 is 1010 in binary, put all zeros in our host portion here, we get our network address. Network 11, we're just going to count up in binary, 1 higher than 10, put it into our four borrowed bits, we get network number 11. All zeros in the host portion, of course, is a network address. I know you've never heard me say that yet. Uh, if you know how many times I've said that, I would be a billionaire if I got a nickel for every time I said that statement. So all zeros in our host portion means a network address. 
There you go. I have a billion dollars and five cents now. Network number 12. 12 in binary is 1100. All zeros in our host portion is the network address. Network 13. Convert 13 into binary. Put it into our borrowed bits. All zeros in the host is our network address. 14. 14 in binary is 1110. All zeros in the host portion to get our network address. And last, network number 15, 1111 in our borrowed bit section. All zeros in our host portion, we get network number 15. If we then ignore where the network portion and host portion lines are drawn, and we take every 8 bits, we can then convert it back to decimal and get the network addresses that we can assign to each facility we need in our environment. Remember, when we're converting these back from binary to decimal, on your worksheet, I've put a special dashed line at every 8 bits. And what that does is it allows you to see the 8-bit sections so that when we're doing the binary to decimal conversion to get these addresses, it's very clear where those boundaries are. Because remember, those 8-bit boundaries really have no relationship at all to the network and host portion. All right, and that's a surprising statement. The 8-bit boundaries in classless addressing, classless addressing means subnetting, means we're using a subnet mask. So in classless addressing, the 8-bit boundaries have absolutely no meaning at all to where the network and host portion are. And you should always remember this. There is no meaning at all to those 8-bit boundaries except for to determine what the decimal equivalent of the IP address is. Sometimes we get an address with a slash 16 or a slash 24. And those happen to fall on the 8-bit boundary, which makes it very convenient. But the 8-bit boundary doesn't really have much to do with the network portion and host portion. It's just a coincidence that the mask of the address happens to fall at that 8-bit boundary. So when we're doing that conversion, keep all that in mind. Let's look at our network addresses here. So we have network number 8 is 10.0.50.128 slash 28. 9 is .144. 10.0.50.128 slash 28. 9 is .144, 10.0.50.128, 9 is .144, 11.176, 12 is .192, 13 is .208, 14.224, and 15.240. 